Okay, hopefully you finished that Canvas assignment and you've seen just how powerful this is. I'd also encourage you to look at some of the submissions from your fellow classmates and maybe comment on those as well. And we'll be sure to actually discuss some of these in our next live session for the class. So the summary on that, of course, is these are ideas that get us started, but these are not ideas we immediately act on. That's really an important piece. Too much of exploratory research is used to make decisions as opposed to generate ideas to then follow up on. So good ideas, but they need more information. Now, just so that you don't think that this is all pie in the sky, let me give you a few examples of real ideas that were generated based on this type of secondary research. Uh, now, I know this is a little bit dated, but here's an article from TechCrunch about iPhones and specifically about iPhone moms. Why don't you go ahead and read that first passage and pause the video if you need a second. I mean, think about it. A third of all users are in this new demographic category. And do you think that might be important to Apple or to companies that make apps? Of course it is. Now, they shouldn't immediately start changing the way that they operate just because of this one fact that they happen to read in an article, but certainly they should consider this in designing their next steps, both in iOS development, product development, accessory development, and certainly app development as well. And of course they are. So here's a short commercial that, again, is, is a bit dated, but you'll see the point. You can see directly who this is being marketed towards. It's unbelievable how much better family trips have gotten. Just last week, I checked us in on the way to the airport, found the kids a snack near the gate, and even had their favorite movie ready to go. Then my husband turned to me and said, did we turn off the lights? So we turned off the lights. And that's why I don't go anywhere without my iPhone. Now again, a little bit of humor is always fun to have in this class. So uh, maybe not everybody loves iPhone moms. Have a watch of this parody commercial that was made just in response to that. My nephew started walking the other day, which we've all done. So my sister-in-law recorded it and spammed everyone in her address book with this freaking huge video file. And if that weren't bad enough, she had to get all of us on the phone for a 30-minute conversation about the 10-second video she made us watch. I get it. He wasn't walking before, and now he's walking. Can I go? We would have never had to go through all this if it weren't for this damn iPhone. So again, this is not meant to be super exhaustive on secondary research, but the idea is if there's information out there that can speak to an idea or a question or a hunch that you might have, secondary research is the way to go. It already exists. It tends to be a whole lot cheaper than primary research. But on the disadvantages side, it tends not to directly address the specific question that you happen to have. But that's okay. Everything is a trade-off. On the one hand, we've got low cost and ease of accessibility. On the other hand, we've got lack of specificity to the specific question you have. And that's a decision you have to make as a business person. That concludes our discussion on secondary research, and next we're going to move on to observational research.